In the meantime, while David Cameron may have admitted he has concerns over public sector pay restraints, Westminster is set for an 11% rise in wages. The Premier himself has expressed surprise at the ruling. But the parliamentary watchdog in charge claims the move won't cost the taxpayer a single penny. RT Sarah Firth now reports. We've got the report from the Independent Parliamentary Standards Authority, or IPSA, as they're known. That was released today. And we'll take you through some of the proposals, because at the heart of this is what IPSA call a one-off pay uplift, uh, which would take MPs' pay from £66,000, as it stands right now, to £74,000. Now, that would come into effect in uh, May 2000. And 15. But of course, you, you talk about uh, MPs getting a pay rise and you get a predictable response from many members of the public. Perhaps surprisingly, uh, many politicians criticising the idea of a pay rise at this time, uh, including the Prime Minister, who warned the body to rethink uh, that decision of any proposed pay rise. Now, we've got to be a bit careful with this because IPSA was set up in the wake of the expenses scandal. Uh, and so what they're saying is that actually these proposals are cost neutral to the taxpayer. It won't cost the taxpayer any more. And that's because they say they're trying to curb MPs' uh, benefits and pensions. And if you look at the statement that was released today with the report from Ips's chairman, he said that for the first time MPs' pay and pensions will be set independently and away from the deals cooked up in Westminster. We're sweeping away the out-of-date and overly generous benefits. So uh, the proposals today really have set IPSA on a collision course with politicians who are going to be complaining about this, saying it's absolutely outrageous that this should happen at this time. So it's going to be very interesting to see uh, how the fallout from these proposals plays out.